All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of the Black Cat Show. I'm Cody Lee, author of Rabbit Hole and Cruel and Beautiful, and owner of BlackCatBooks.org. Uh, here today with a Nintendo Direct reaction. Uh, hopefully, it works this time. Uh, this is this is the first time I've done a live reaction, a multi-stream on Twitch, YouTube, and uh, D Live. So I think everything is uh, is set and good to go here. All right, I was just uh, sitting up reading Fight Club. Uh, I was <laughs> I was playing a lot of Super Nintendo earlier today, uh, playing or uh, Act Razor on stream. That was great. Pac Man Two, lots of good stuff. Uh, I have a I'm a, a, a Sakuna of Rice and Ruin, a great great game. I'm actually like a, I am officially out of Switch games to play. <laughs> I legit don't have anything on my to play shelf. It's all like it's all finished. I, I'm not interested in uh, in um, playing anything else that's out right now. So uh, at the moment, I am uh, really really struggling to find new Switch games. So I hope I hope fingal, fingers crossed that we're going to get something good here. At the very least. At the very least, uh, I expect to see Silk Song. I I do think we're gonna see Silk Song today. Uh, we're probably gonna see Sports Story. It's been so long since we heard that game. I, I want hard release dates for both those games. Um, other than that, though, eh, it's in the air. Like uh, the uh, the quality of indie games in general has gone like way way down over the past couple of years. I think since Gamergate and like SJWs became more prominent in the indie game development sphere. Like, indie games have just gotten worse and worse and worse, man. Like, there have been, like, some standout titles, you know, like Hollow Knight, like Shovel Knight, like um, Mr. Shifty I really liked, uh, Stealth Inc. 2. Like, there, there are plenty of great, like, indie games out there. But, like, I feel like more and more, like, a lot of a lot of time in these indie directs, these indie world directs are just time wasters. I just cannot stand most of the stuff they've uh, they've shown off lately. And and a lot of it comes to Xbox Game Pass. So I've played a lot of a lot of crap over the past couple of years like Dandera, that was shit. That was that was shown in Indie Direct. Um like uh Spirit Fairer hated that. Um there, there's just a lot of bad games. A lot of bad games that just they just they they, they just don't stop coming. <laughs> Like there, there are a handful of uh, of good ones, but like I, I can't remember the last time I've been really, really thrilled about an indie world direct. The past couple of times, the past couple of times we've uh, we've done this and then talked about um, had an indie showing. It's been very, very, very disappointing. Um, I've I've gone on record saying it's um, it's been a massive, massive, massive downgrade in recent years. Um, I'm uh, I've been very very disappointed in recent N N indie, uh, Nintendo indie directs. N the the uh, the primary first party directs are fine. Well, the first party announcements are fine, but it, it really does feel like the vast majority of announcements coming from both di directs from like developers that aren't Nintendo are shit. And there are like exceptions. Like like I said, I just I just brought up Sakuna on stream. That is like legit probably one of the best games of 2020. Like <laughs> playing it again, I think I like it more than like playing it again. Like I think I like it more than uh Origami King. I think I like it more than Deadly Premonition 2. I think I like it more than uh Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity for sure. Like I I can't think of anything that came out in 2020 that I that I like more than Sakuna. Like I, I think Monster Hunter Rise would probably topple it. Um, Sakuna is like sadly kind of tedious in 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 a, in a lot of ways. Like I, I don't really like care for the backtracking, and sometimes you you get needlessly confused. But for the most part, um, let's see. Yeah, yeah. For the most part, I really, really, really enjoy Sakuna. Like it's a great action game. It's like a better version of Mur Muramasa mixed with like a better version of Harvest Moon. Well, not really better Harvest Moon, but like a different Harvest Moon. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like so many modern like Harvest Moon has had this problem for like years now. Like I, I legit want to say since the PS One era, where like they haven't really been able to innovate and like do something new and interesting with like the formula. And I think Sakuna is it. Like, it's stuff like Sakuna and Rune Factory. Like, just having the chores be something you do in between, like, other other mission sections. Like, you know, in Sakuna, you're out, like, gathering materials. You're out, like, fighting monsters. Like, 
Uh, you're out like exploring. There's all this crazy stuff going on in Sakuna. Like it all just comes together beautifully. Like the story is great, surprisingly compelling. Great voice acting. <laughs> here I am, like uh, supposed to be reacting to like upcoming indie games, but here I am, like gushing over Sakuna. Ugh. Yeah, Sakuna is great. I, I am. I am like appalled that I haven't like that. I haven't that I didn't just sit down and finish it. Um, I am. So, so disappointed in myself with that one. Uh, love, love Sakuna. Highly recommend it. Probably, at this point, like, probably one of my all-time favorite indie games on Switch. It's something that really could have come out on Wii U, I think. Um, yeah, I'd say it's better than a good deal of, like, my favorite Wii U indie games. Um, yeah, most of, like, the uh, the Wii U indie games are, like, multi-plats now. Um, let's see, what was an example of that? Um... Yeah, Stealth Inc. 2, like I mentioned, Shovel Knight. <laughs> uh, Shovel Knight. I um, love, love, love you, Shovel Knight. Hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, indie games kind of come out of nowhere by their nature, right? Like, you have a bunch of people just coming out and, like, putting out, like, new games all the time. Like, I've thought about um, coming out and putting together a game. Like, um, <laughs> I could legit do it. Like, if I could get, like, a really good artist, like, to, uh, to make me a, the background for, like, a visual novel and, like, do character designs for me, like, I could legit, like, do a visual novel. I've been wanting to do one for a while, but um, I'll put it on Switch. I, I would love, love to do that. I would... I think I could be really good at that and put together, like, uh, uh, make something really unique. I have something very very specific in mind uh, that I, but, yeah, I, I need to, like, pfft, that's years away, dude. Like, I'm working on, my like, my actual novels. I would love to put together a visual novel. I would love to, like, make video games based on my work. I would love to do all that, but it's, like, that's... That's a long way away, man. I, I don't know. Like, 10 years ago, like, making novels was felt like a long way away. So, like, maybe in another 10 years? I, I am looking into it. Like, I have, like, played around with engines a little bit. I've had, like, tried to rationalize what would, like, the best game be for me to make. And, like, the, the thing I did come up with was visual novels. That might actually be a, be a good niche for me to fit. Like, uh, especially if I, I put together, like my storylines with like really really good japanese art like i would i would really love doing that um i really really admire japanese artists in general um there's like there's all this like gorgeous artwork of all these like that i just love i i don't even like play visual novels on switch but like i really like like looking at all of them as they're like submitted on like the eShop and like looking at all these like scenarios and stuff like <laughs> all these things on there like I, I just love the artwork for a lot of them um i, I would love to produce something like that I, I really would uh but 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 i'm not a fan of it myself which is kind of interesting um the closest thing i've gotten to ever being a fan of a visual novel was like maybe ace attorney like some people classify uh, ace attorney as being a visual novel i don't uh I don't, I don't, honestly. Like, there, there's too much puzzle solving. There's too much, like, there's too much gameplay involved. Uh, people say there's no gameplay in Phoenix Wright. You are wrong. You are full of shit. Like, <laughs> Phoenix Wright is a great video game. It is not a visual novel. <sighs> I, I don't know. Um, oof. Let's see. Wait a minute. Is it? What time is it? I've been sitting here for what feels like forever. Yep, yep, two minutes. Uh, are we all updated? Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like we're good. Um, Indie World, four fourteen twenty twenty one. A new Indie World showcase arrives on Wednesday, April fourteenth at nine a.m. Uh, yeah, I stayed up all night for this shit. Like, come on, 9 a.m.? Like, I woke up at, like... Oh, wait, what did I... Yeah, I've been up since 7 p.m., I think. 7 or 8. So it hasn't been that long. All right. A new Indie World Showcase arrives on Wednesday, April 14th. Yeah, imagine if I, like, streamed for, like, 10 minutes only to realize that this wasn't actually Wednesday, April 14th. It is, I checked, but, uh... Roughly 20 minutes, focused on fresh and new indie games coming to Nintendo Switch. Oh, okay, so new games. So they're not going to, like, be talking about old stuff? Stuff they've shown before? I guess they could just throw, like, release dates 
and like a general Nintendo Direct. They can just like throw these things, a lot of them, on the eShop. That's what I've been doing for like a while now. Like I cannot find anything good on the eShop. There, there, I used to have this gigantic list of stuff I wanted to buy, but like I removed all of it because like I didn't think I'd be able to. I was interested in a lot of it because like I, I was buying a bunch of indie games that I did not care for. So like I really like uh, really just cut down on like the amount of stuff I was buying. And um, now I can't really find anything to play because there's so much shit on there. There's so much bullshit on Switch. The time to get on Switch to, like, really make a name for yourself was in 2017. Like, I'm talking about, like, putting games on Switch now. I should have been, like, out there doing it in, like, 2017. Ah, here we go. All right, reaction time! All right. Due to COVID-19... Oh, yeah, the, uh... <laughs> the... Okay, due to COVID-19 and release dates and other information... Professor Utonium? Oh, this is clearly a Powerpuff Girls game. All right, Indie World. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Indie World. My name's Ted. And I'm Elise. And we're here to check out- hey, Ted and Elise? Where'd you get- coming to the Nintendo They always have new people for this. What happened to my boy, Damon Baker? Help you find your next favorite <laughs> no, I miss so you, Damon. I miss you. Hey, it's me. Alex, I'm okay. I met this girl, this boy, a loser, at the diner, at the gas station, in the mountains. Wait, what? They were hitchhiking, driving. They were escaping to the border. <laughs> the border? Oh no, shit. Biden's America. Jared. I should probably. Uh... <laughs> oh no. I'm running from the police, I'm running from some bad guys. They helped me, played games with me, they stole my money, and they made me realize. But I have to come back home. I have to make my own way. To help the brigades. <laughs> Wait, what? So you're helping a runaway kid? Road 42. Road 67. Road 96. Road 96. Hey, ici Dijon. Okay. Studio Indé du Sud de la France. France, okay. Road 96 is a narrative and procedural inspired by the road movies of the 90s. Procedural? It's a great idea to tell a story starting with any part of the song, and we're very happy to have done that. Yeah, so this is going to be the No Man's Sky of, like, interacting with a runaway kid game. I don't know! It, it legit did look better than No Man's Sky, at least. Uh, but that's really not saying much. Yeah, they might have done something interesting. Uh, we'll have to see. I mean, to see where these roads lead yeah, I, I want to see more from this. I probably won't buy it, but uh, I'm sure it has a niche. Take on the roles of different teenagers and hit the open road for a path to freedom. On this perilous trip, you'll meet characters from all walks of life and learn their intertwining stories. Some folks may help you out. Others might impede your journey. With yeah, yeah, this might actually be interesting. Take, the decisions okay. you make, both big and small, can drastically alter your experience. What happens if you take the bus? Take it easy. Or call a taxi. In the end, all roads have to lead somewhere. You're okay, okay. Ride. This might actually uh Where are you? Yeah, I'm interested. I'm intrigued. There are many roads. Which one will you take? French people. <laughs> I uh I love it, my one of me. I love it. This year. I really need to work on my work on my French. I was in the process of oh, who's this guy? Night Online. I'm the creator and developer of Aerial Knights Never Yield, a narrative runner that captures the spirit of classic games in the genre, but with a few new features and a lot of style. I created this game in Detroit. This with this guy's head. I. It looks like. I, just look, I don't know what it is, but he just kind of looks so. He looks like an alien. I'm proud to announce that Aerial Knights Never Yield will be coming okay. to Nintendo Switch. Which means you can okay. run your way to victory to the beat of a dope soundtrack at home or on the go. Please enjoy this look at Ariel Knight. I don't know. There's something about this guy that's just like that, that smile was super creepy. I don't know what it is. <laughs> These indie devs, they 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 look like they're from another planet. They really do. They they don't look like they live in the same reality as we do. Hmm. Yeah, I can't say uh, this is the kind of thing I'm interested in. Not a fan of these running games. Bringing it back in full effects to the next. Running with the best, never missing a Ah, fuck hip hop, yeah, of course. I stay fresh off and that's a progress with no stress. In and out of city, I get busy, they can't get me, I can't be stopped. I'm on top. Okay. I'm giving it all I got. It's all locked. I'm going right. Let's 
Yeah, I don't really see anything I like about it. The music sucks. Never yield. Nintendo Switch. What's with the Japanese? Oh no, he's a Japanese game developer. I gotta say, this definitely isn't your typical runner. A 3D side scroller with parkour action set in a futuristic Tokyo style Detroit? Sign me up. Oh come on. Yeah, this doesn't look good at all. And dash through the city as the protagonist Wally. So it's it's like 2D like mirror's edge. And you'll no doubt be head bopping <laughs> the amazing soundtrack by Detroit artists. But like yeah, it's like a it's like a worse mirror's edge. Like a two the world. No no. Aerial Knights never yield, slides onto Nintendo Switch. Doesn't look impressive, don't care. Don't care about hip-hop. Um, not my thing. At the demo? Later today. Should we try it? Like, if it's just if it's just a demo, I might as well try it. Interactive, publisher of Florence and what remains of Edith Finch, have a couple more artistic gems headed to Ah, uh, artistic. Switch. Let's take a look. Uh, what does that mean? Jack, everybody thinks you're me. We have to face the facts here. We are ever going to be the same again. Three entangled stories. Why are you only speaking to me and not the others? <laughs> Who was that? That animation looked terrible. I want to keep this family together, <laughs> but what can I do with this? What an incredible adventure. I mean, I, I'll give it one... I'll, I'll give this direct one thing. Like, we're not seeing, like, any of those low-budget, like, Tumblr-looking shit, which, uh, I, I could really say... Like, at least these games look ambitious. Like, they actually look like they're trying something a little bit different. Uh, so this this is way better than the last one already, I would say. Ah, oh, here we go. Hindsight. How do you know what to keep? And what to get rid of? There's some things that I can't let go. They transported me to the past, to distant memories. I don't know, like, I, I definitely don't care for these story trailers. Like, give me gameplay. If you don't show me gameplay, I, uh, I am 100% like, not interested. Like, it means you don't have anything to show. I don't care. This might as well be like The Last of Us Part 3, like, for, for what I care. Like, I, I don't... What exactly was that? Oh, yeah, bring up The Last of Us Part 2 and there's a, there's Joel right there. Joel fucking made this. This is Joel's Last game. Stop arrives on Nintendo Switch, July 2021. What is it? Hindsight comes to Nintendo Wait. Switch later this so year. So we don't know what either of these games are. Yeah, no, drop. Worst game. Here at Roll7, I'm stoked to announce our next title. Our new game is a vibrant action platformer taking you on a journey across the island of Radland on a quest to meet the legendary skate gods. Skateboarding is a sport and an art form with so much space for creativity. Oh fuck yes! And that's something we really want. Is this to a new pro skater game? We're embracing the weird, wonderful, and diverse sides of skateboarding. Oh, and diverse! I don't. I don't like the sound of that. Friends, finding crazy spots, and of course. That's a red flag for me. That so word's a big red flag for me. Project, and we're really excited to share it with you. So without further ado, here's a look at Oli Oli World. Ah, oh, no! Oli series from Roll Seven is just oh, come on. The rails. Tear Another one of these. Of Radland and search for the mystical skate gods on your quest for Nirvana in this slick action platform. Yeah, they had me up until like uh, they showed the gameplay. Oh. I heard skateboarding and immediately was like, oh yeah, new pro skater. I've been playing a lot of like Tony Hawk's Underground and like that game is phenomenal. It really is like fantastic. I am um, one of the game. One of the one of the things I wanted to do is like yeah, I would I would want to produce a sequel to that. All the time though. I love 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 Underground. Explore multiple paths. It's legit probably levels. my favorite skateboarding game. Along um, the way, you'll get to meet colorful characters, take on quirky side quests, and discover like, all the on Tony Hawk's Underground is like a piece of art because like it really makes you like even if you're not into skateboarding like I am, it really makes you care about like the sport and like the athletes and like the, the culture and stuff like that. Um it's it's phenomenal that I really appreciate it. What is with these weird looking people? What is with these people? Okay. Can anybody explain this to me? What is with these people? They all look like aliens. Ah, uh, storytelling. Uh, the longing. Ooh, okay. I like that artwork look appealing. Oh, no. Nah. 
I don't know, man. It looks kind of flashy, but the atmosphere might do it for me. Uh, so what is it? Is this a point and click adventure game? How will you pass the time? What is this game about? Huh. Yeah, I do kind of like the vibe they're going for, but I don't know what the game is. The longing. Okay. Um. This hand-drawn art style. I've never seen anything like it. And wow, 400 days in real time? Hey, what? You don't actually have to play this adventure game to see how it ends. But that doesn't mean you should leave this little guy all alone. This Wait. is a shade. The last servant of a king who once ruled an underground kingdom. Hey, what? Explore dark caves, complete time-based puzzles, and collect items as you long for him to awaken. The longing comes to Nintendo Switch later today. Wait, 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 wait. So you spend 400 days waiting for him to... Okay, that that is interesting. I am really... I, uh, okay, I am interested in that one. There is no game. It's a point and click comedy. Oh adventure. fuck. This is like the new untitled Goose game, isn't it? There's a broader story here in this non-game as well. Let's not ruin the fun though. Just know this. So it looks like a shittier version of WarioWare. Something experimental that's full of surprises, then look no further. There is no game wrong dimension. Launches. So yeah, <laughs> the new the new uh, untitled Goose game, I suppose. Oh man, it has no title, so it's deep and artsy. And then serial from the thing. Today we're very sad Frenchies. Now, okay. What's with all the French people in this in this thing? All right. This game is a side scrolling beat them up. Wait, what? Oh, is this Turtles? Oh it is! It's Turtles! Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles! Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles! We are really happy to have the game coming to Nintendo Switch. Yeah, yeah, so it's coming. Okay. I will check it out for sure. I, I'm not a big fan of beat em ups in general. I, I've never even played like any of the, the classic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games. Like I played like the really shitty ones from like the two thousands. Actually, how bad were those? I, I should like pop those in again and play them on stream. I, I'm really curious. Yeah, with this coming out, I, I should probably do that. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll go order a GameCube version of the first one right now. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, I, I, I legit don't think I've played that games either of those games since like mid 2000, 2005 or so. Like it's been forever. The second one like has a port of um, of. Um, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game in it, so it's worth picking up for that reason. Like it was worth picking whoa, whoa, up for that day, but I, I never got the third one. Back to the eighties, even better. This Damn. is a new game that proudly celebrates its roots. The game is okay. reminiscent of classic arcade beat 'em ups, and it's got a blend of retro and modern visuals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I might be into this. Reunites our four favorite turtles as they kick some. I, I need to get back into turtles for sure. Like I, I was thinking about like checking out the classic comics. I don't know. Like the thing, like with these these kind of series, they, they always go on and like they they always decline in quality. I'll probably just watch like Turtle Two and Three or something, and stick with like these uh these, these video games. Later this year. Yeah, definitely checking that out. Definitely checking that out. So that's is that technically Turtles Five? Colombian developers, Dreams Incorporated. Oh yeah, that game that was like on the coming soon section forever. This, what especially this, stands this out thing. about it is the time They really wanted you to know this was coming out. You can shift time during combat, which can have a variety of effects, like making enemies younger and thus easier to defeat. While exploring this handcrafted dark fairy tale world, you'll recruit a diverse cast of allies and discover new realms, such as the Shining Kingdom of Crystallis. Can you stop the Empress from destroying the world? Chris Tales lands on Yeah, the I have a bazillion other RPGs 20th. to play. I I'll wait for Project Triangle strategy, thank you. Showcasing a stylized Japanese aesthetic. Gets a oh fuck yeah. A this looks great. Roguelite experience filled with perilous dungeons. Yeah, this looks great. This looks good. Really, really good. Yeah, this is a. Uh, this is my shit. Okay. Hydra of the Death. You fight Hydras? Oh, is that coming? Konami? It's from Konami? 
It's coming! Konami's back? Have they... How is that indie? It's coming from Konami? Wait, that was the best looking Konami game I've seen in years! Wait, is Konami back? Have they finally lifted the Kojima curse? Aztec Forgotten Gods combina una historia profunda con un universo fascinante y lleno de acción. Aztec, ok. Estamos muy orgullosos de poder compartir un poquito de México con jugadores en todo el mundo. Oh, fuck yeah, Mexico. I love Mexico. Ok. Mexican culture. Yeah, I need to, like, really learn more about, like, Mexican culture in general. Aztecs. Now this looks good too. Damn, this is like the best indie show we've gotten in a while. Yeah, yeah, lots of stuff I'm interested in. Okay. The gods. To their knees. Alright, alright. I'm, I'm about to see more gameplay, but uh, it looked pretty solid. Going by what we saw, like, I was uh, pretty impressed. Looking grand adventure look no further than aztec forgotten gods it tells the story of ashley a courageous woman who battles colossal deities like shadow the glasses oh yes this looks so good this technology front and center as this does look good powerful yeah yeah definitely check this one out different areas within a modern mesoamerican metropolis and encounter all sorts of characters to uncover ancient secrets it looks unique it looks However, different sometimes the truth is best left forgotten aztec forgotten gods soars onto the nintendo switch system fall 2021 okay so this year okay so probably another six months yeah definitely checking that one out Southpaw? Oh no, you fucking lefties. Get out of my video games. Koreans. Okay. Okay. Oh, yes! Okay, this... Yes! Okay, th that sounds good. That sounds good. Show it. Please be good. Oh, it looks like Hollow Knight. That looks like too much like a Hollow Knight to me. Okay. Okay. Eh, not thrilled about it. Like, I think it might be good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think this might be good, yeah. The boss fights look good. That's what, That's kind of what won me over. Skull the Hero Slayer. Ooh, I like that a lot. Skull the Hero Slayer is a 2D fast action roguelike where you take on an entire oh a roguelike oh that was a platformer and the best part not a not a fan of roguelikes game, you'll need to swap abilities which is done by swapping heads yeah i never got into like 90 playable characters <sighs> yeah i just don't what was that game that came out a couple years ago that the one the prison i can't remember what it was called uh that one was like really critically acclaimed it was great and i couldn't get into it in Skull the Hero Slayer, launching on Nintendo Switch, summer 2021. Yeah, not a fan. Don't think I'm gonna. You're nearing the end of today's showcase. Yeah, Before show is so fun. There are several more indie games we'd like to show you. Please take a look. Yep, yep, bird. Was that Fez? Oh no. Oh no, Phil Fish. Is he gonna be relevant again? Oh no! Uh, Art of Rally. Fuck, fucking Fez. Kiwi, sold out. Labyrinth City, Pierre the Maze Detective. Oof. Weaving Tides. Okay. You're not too thrilled about a lot of these. There, there was some good stuff to show. House of the Dead Remake. Yeah, yeah, I will be uh, checking that out. Love, love House of the Dead. 
<laughs> I remember I played it like in an arcade once and like a bunch of Spanish girls, I think they were Spanish, Mexican girls, like came over. They'd never seen it before. And like, I just showed it off to them. It was a, it was a novelty for them. <laughs> great, great memories with that. Um, yeah, Fez Polytron, available later. Oh, boo. Boo, fuck you, Phil Fish. You're a hack. You're not a you're not a you're not a game developer. <laughs> okay. Ready to start your next Fucking indie adventure on Nintendo Switch? Head on over to Nintendo eShop or Nintendo. Okay, yeah, I'll be checking that out. I was gonna check that after the show anyway. Available later today. Yeah, I'll be checking I'll be checking that out for sure. We hope you're looking forward to these games. On behalf of everyone at Nintendo, we'd like to thank our talented community of partners and developers for bringing their games to the Nintendo Switch system. And thank you to all of our amazing fans for tuning in. To stay up to date with all the latest news from Indie World, please be sure to follow our official Twitter account at IndieWorldNA. Until next time, happy, happy gaming! gaming. Huh. Uh, we spoke too soon. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say, didn't you One say you had another announcement? You. Yeah, it's probably Silk Song. Can't imagine it not being. No, no more heroes? No. Uh, no. Hey, what is this shit? I saved this for last? What's so special about it? Riley, are you there? Mm -hmm. Lost signals. Oh, what was that? Okay. Worst teaser I've ever seen. <laughs> why did they why did they fake us out like that? Okay. Yeah, I have no idea what that was. Um yeah, they actually showed a couple of good things this time. Uh, you just need a couple of good things to make me happy. Um, yeah, a couple of those games looked interesting. Uh, the Aztec one looked good. The Lost, the Longing one looked okay. Uh, what was that really, really good one? Um, yeah, the Konami game, that looked great. Um, I have no idea what Konami was in an indie presentation, though. Like, that doesn't really make any sense to me. Um, like, Konami should just... Wouldn't it be great if, like, Nintendo just acquired, like, Konami's video game division? You know, acquired Metal Gear, acquired Contra, acquired, Bomber, acquired Bomberman, like, acquired all that shit. Like, there is a <laughs> there's a lot of stuff they would gain from, like, buying Konami. Like, Konami is, like, one of my all-time uh, favorite third-party developers. So, like, seeing Nintendo acquire them or, like, acquire their video game franchises, Bomberman in particular, would be, like, a big deal for them. Um, but, yeah, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a bad show at all. It wasn't a bad show at all. Uh... Forgive me, I wasn't um, I wasn't paying attention to the chat. I actually uh, I actually had no idea anybody was uh, was chatting. I was too busy like watching the show. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, I I love House of the Dead. Uh that that was something I was uh, really looking forward to. I, I heard it was coming, but like I don't I don't think we've seen it in a trailer before. So this is something a little bit different. Um, very very exciting for that. Yeah. So there was a lot of good stuff. A lot of stuff um, that I was interested in. Oof. Yeah, uh, I'll have to go look in the. I, I think the uh, the sale is on the sale is on the eShop right now, so I think I am gonna like uh, <laughs> go, go and uh, have a look see there and like uh, pick up some games and uh, I'll tell you what I think. Hey um, Welcome back to Nintendo Treehouse Live at E3. I'm Sam, joined by oops. Audrey, and we have Katie here. Hang on, it's not E3 yet. E3 2019. Oh come on, <laughs> another few months and it will be E3. So. Yeah, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, this was a really exciting indie showing. I uh, really liked what Nintendo had to show us uh, in general. There were a couple of, like, j stinkers there, but there, there wasn't anything too bad. Uh, nothing that really got me angry like the last one. Um, and they showed lots of good games, too, which is always more important. So uh, that was good.